Hi and welcome to Be More Super, the podcast. Uh, this is a show where I find out what makes these TV and film stars super. So this week we've got a great guest. She's been in Pacific Rim, CW's Charmed, as well as The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina and currently starring in the fifth and final season of Van Helsing. It's of course Heather Dirksen. So sit back, relax and enjoy the interview and don't forget if you enjoyed this interview, please give me a subscribe and hit the bell for further videos to come. I've got some amazing guests, so please hit subscribe and the bell button. This show is brought to you, as always, by our wonderful sponsors, Prop Store. So Prop Store are a company that sell amazing screen use prop and costumes from your favourite TV and film shows. So check them out at PropStore.com because I've always got a great auction coming up or you can buy straight from the website. So that's PropStore.com. So sit back, relax, and enjoy my interview with Heather Dirksen. So on this week's episode of Be More Super, the podcast, we've got a real treat. Uh, she, This actress has starred in Pacific Rim, CW's Charmed, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, and my personal favourite, uh, which is on your screens right now, uh, it's the fifth and final season of Van Elsing. It's Heather Dirksen. Heather, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks so much for having me, Brian. Oh, it's my, it's my absolute pleasure pleasure it really really is because i followed van elsing from the start and it's just getting better and better and better and i can't believe it's the fifth and final season but we're going to talk about that uh in a little while but before we do i just wanted to check how's everything with you with the pandemic how's life uh is it looking a lot rosier now with everything slowly lifting yeah, I think there is that feeling. It's less panic, I think, and and fear and more just um, learning how to live and, and stay in touch with the people who give you support during this time. So uh, figuring out what those systems are. Mine are like big group texts with friends and just sending off memes and laughing as much as I can. You know, I think that's all we can yeah. do right now. And is it quite restricted still where you are? I mean, are there quite a lot of rules still in place? I mean, you still can go to restaurants and eat outside on the patio. And you're supposed to restrict the amount of people that you see and limit it to outdoor visits. So mm. it's not totally locked down. There are some allowances in place right now, but you still need to be careful. And non-essential travel is uh, not allowed right now. That's yeah. where we're at. Yeah. yeah. Okay. How about you? In the UK currently, um, we can people can go to the pub or the bar or whatever you call it over where you are. Um, and it's quite funny because they can only have a drink outside, um, you know, and that's it. So the weather at the moment in the UK is absolutely terrible. So every time I drive past the same pub every day after work, it's chucking it down. And there's people sat at tables drinking their pints because they're British and nothing's going to stop them. But May the 17th is when you can eat inside, you can socialise. And then June the 21st, fingers crossed and touch wood, um, all restrictions are going to be lifted. But I think we've just got to be careful. We've still got to be careful. We really do. Yeah. Thanks for checking in about that. I think that is important to do. So thank you. Yeah, I mean, as well as work, I mean, work is 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 being being affected with shooting, and you know, with a lot of the interviews I'm doing recently, I'm hearing that a lot of production is going back now with restrictions in 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 place, which is great because, you know, be being an actor during the pandemic, you know, must 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 have been awful um, in the way of not being able to film anything. Yeah, and for that time period and actually for an entire year i decided to uh, stick to voice work so um i didn't do any on camera stuff for that first year and i had just come back from slovakia from shooting van helsing and then everything got locked down as soon as we finished those slovak 
episodes. It was kind of crazy timing in that we actually did film them to in their entirety and were able to complete them before we had to get home because of the pandemic. Kind of crazy. Yeah. And thank goodness you got back in time because um, I had um, Kim Coates on the show uh, <gasps> literally two days after uh, he got back from shooting and he wouldn't tell me what the project was was about and obviously now we know he was count dalibor um yes. but yeah he got back just in time before everything locked locked down so um that was very very fortunate so let's find out about your past heather but the good 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 past we're not gonna drag up anything that you don't want to talk about uh but uh, how on earth does someone that wants to be a uh environmental biologist go into acting <laughs> because it's just a strange you know, you know, bridge, you know, to get into acting. Yeah, I feel like my brain, my right side of my brain and my left side of my brain both were dueling with each other my whole life. I, I really love math and science and logic, but then I also really love creativity and, and writing and acting and dancing and singing. So it was kind of like, what am I going to follow for my career path? And I think because of you know, financial reasons, I decided to go the path of science, uh, you know, thinking that there would be a regular paycheck down the road there, as opposed to the arts. And then mm -hmm. I guess I just decided to follow my heart and see if I could actually make a living doing that as well. So it, there was a little bit of logic in there as well. It was like, can I actually make a living doing this? I don't want to be a starving artist but I still want to do my art. So how, how do I accomplish that? So that's kind of what happened there. And when you decided to finally become an actor, did you have an end goal in sight? Did you know what you wanted to achieve? Or was it a case of you just wanted to do it for the love of, you know, the art? I don't know if I had an end goal in mind. I think you're right about doing it for the love. And also I needed to be able to support a family when I decided to have a family. So that was actually a thought in my head too. I wanted to create art, but I also needed to be able to provide when that time came. So I knew that I was gonna do it forever no matter what, but I wasn't sure if I would be able to do it full time and um, and and yeah, make a career out of it or not. So I just had to kind of mm. throw myself into it with everything I had, and see if if any anybody bit. <laughs> <laughs> and what was the biggest challenge that you faced when you were first starting out? I think when you're first starting, it's it's where do I who do I go to for representation? Is there an agent mm. that might be interested in me with no no resume? And uh, what kind of agent will I be getting? And will it be commercials or TV and film? I guess the challenge was staying positive with so many no's because you get hit with so many no's along the mm. road. And there's always going to be no's in your life. But I think the best tool I learned during that time was to stay persistent and keep going. And eventually somebody will say yes. And that yes is is just so delicious. <laughs> and definitely rejection, I think, for, for, for an actor. Because, uh, you know, this is great seg segue on to the next quest question, which is auditions. Auditions, some people love them and some people hate them. Personally, I hate auditions because my nerves just go off the charts and I've got a stammer. So I went through speech therapy for, for years to get rid of a stammer. And I went into performing arts um, at, 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 you know, at college and u university to get over my stammer because when you're acting, it doesn't come out, which is marvellous. Um, so how do you find auditioning? Do you enjoy it or do you hate it? I actually like auditioning because I get really stuck in my head. And so the wheels will turn, I'll second guess everything. And I start to um, do my lines or my performance in a very robotic way in, in my mind, it ends up feeling very robotic. But with auditions, because there's that extra adrenaline going on and, and there are those nerves, I feel like there's more of a fresh, I give a fresh, exciting, 
audition because I'm not so in my head. I'm very much in the room and yeah, nervous, a little nervous. It, it helps me, I think, with it. So I do like auditioning. Um, it's different want- now. There's the self tapes versus going into the room yeah. with the cast director. So it's a different dynamic. Like the casting directors would work with you and give you notes. And with the self tapes, you just have to kind of go, well, I guess this is maybe what they want and just <laughs> go with it. With your first gut instinct. But I, I suppose the flip side of things is that you can, I don't know, uh, record your self-tape. If you don't like it, you can re-record, So, which is great. Um, but what's been your worst ho- or audition to date? I mean, was it when you were starting out? or? Yeah, my worst audition. Oh, my goodness. What can I, how, there has, there is one in the recesses. <laughs> And, uh, oh yes, okay, there was, uh, one of the first ones was for commercial and they asked if you could roller skate and uh, could you also please bring those roller skates with you? And I was like, oh yeah, you know, as an actor, we're told to just say yes, just say you can do all the things, just say yes, so you can get the audition, just go. You can learn, it's fine. And so I brought my dusty like roller blades or something like that with me. And I put them on in the waiting room and I'm waiting to go in. And I <laughs> <laughs> and I just remember going into the room and kind of just really wobbling around like a, you know, like a, like a baby giraffe and like kind of crashing into things and really not, not uh, being sturdy on my roller blades in any fashion. I did not get that. I couldn't even get my lines out. I was so bad <laughs> so does that does that make you think twice now what you put on your resume on what you can and can't do yeah the special skills i definitely <laughs> edited it after that i was just like i i will only put things on there that i'm very very good at from now on <laughs> and what's the um the best piece of advice that you can get can give to anyone that's going to audition for anything I think that um, a great a great thing that I remember um, being told was just to go with your first gut instinct, and um, because that's your essence and that's who you are, and that is the flavor that makes you you. And if they want somebody else's flavor, they're going to hire that person. But just mm. remember what's what's yours, and remember your take on it, and go in and just give it to them unapologetically. And if they want something different, they'll, you know, redirect you if it's in person or they'll, you know, email you and say, can you do it again in a different way? But Mm -hmm. just go with that first gut instinct. Don't second guess yourself and do it without apology. Awesome advice. Do you really think that they're going to go back to in-person auditions, you know, compared to like the self-tapes being such a a normal thing now? Do you reckon they'll ever go back to in person i think it depends on the the casting director there are mm. some casting directors i know that are really looking forward to in person so i think they'll try to create that environment quicker than some other casting directors who are comfortable with it being self tape so um i also know there's a, a casting director in the town who will give you the option of zooming your audition with her if you would prefer um maybe if you don't have the right taping equipment or if you're nervous or if you have questions about the character she gives you that option which is really nice nobody else does so i don't know if it'll go back anytime soon though Mm -hmm. and what and who's been your biggest influence um in in your career so 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 far my biggest influence in my career so far i would probably say my university or college acting teacher And he was more of a motivational speaker now that I think of it. He was kind of like, he did teach us some acting techniques, but there was a lot of classes where he'd find, he'd get us to find a spot in the room and, and kind of meditate and close our eyes and think about the obstacles in our lives that are keeping us from doing that one thing that we're really passionate about. And, you know, we were young students at the time. So I think he really knew that there was, Uh, an opportunity to teach us about listening to that inner voice and following your Mm -hmm. dream. So it was very much like follow that dream, follow that, 
that drive inside of you. And actually that's when I switched my major from biology to theater was when wow. he was my teacher. So he was very and you, influential. And, you, and do you keep in touch with him anymore or is he with us? No, but I should. I oh, totally no. should. Oh, thanks, Brian. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh no, this big motivational, you know, person in, in your life and you haven't spoken to him. Um, but yeah, what a so, horrible thing. I hope he doesn't see this. So, so Heather, we we have seen you in some amazing mo movies and TV shows, um, but which do you prefer to actually do? Because they're both very different. I can ima I can imagine the work wise, but which do you prefer and why? Oh, you know, I like. I like both film. You get the entire script. So you know exactly where your character starts and where they end and what their journey is in between and how that character helps the story. It's also a shorter shooting schedule, typically, unless it's a huge, big blockbuster, then it takes a few months. But with TV, it's almost like a surprise or it tends to be a surprise where your character is going. And I think it's because the writers like to develop it as they go. So if somebody's inspiring them or if there's a storyline they want to take it somewhere, then they have that option in TV. And you don't necessarily know where your character is going to end up. Whereas mm -hmm. in film, you have that. So I'm not sure. I I like both for both those different reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and when we talk about big blockbusters, the first time I ever saw you on screen was in Pacific Rim where you yeah. play this kick-ass Jaeger pilot and, you know, it's just an, an amazing film. What was it like to work on that film? It was unbelievable. I remember I got the phone call when I was outside. If anybody knows, well, nobody would know. But anyways, I was outside of this huge big department store in Toronto at the time. And I got the phone call and I was screaming on the street in the middle of all the people. And... <laughs> shooting the actual film was crazy. They took up six sound stages and um, Guillermo just had such a love of both the kaiju who were the alien creatures that came up from the ocean. He really loved them so much. They were like his babies. They weren't like the villains necessarily to him. He mm. really thought carefully about who they were as characters in the story. And and then how, you know, the the Jaeger pilots are going to vanquish them. So he really had this whole story fleshed out in his mind. And it was just amazing working with him. When we got to actually pilot the Jaegers, the big robots, they built a head to scale. So it was on hydraulics. It was the biggest thing you've ever seen in this soundstage. And we had to like climb a ladder to get up there in our, in our suits. And we got in and it was just this monstrous head that we were in. And we, we got to do the piloting from there and they shot the scenes while we were strapped in to the head of the Jaeger. It was incredible. And the, Rollicks were moving around and moving us all over and you know <laughs> when we got hit by the kaiju we'd like fling backwards it was incredible it was so fun and he's such a a true visionary uh del, del, del toro i mean what was it like to be directed by by him he is he's very communicative he lets you know what his vision is he's um He's very clear and he's also super funny. Like he can really tell a joke that makes everyone laugh and then nobody's uptight. I don't think anybody was stressed out or uptight the mm. entire shoot. There was no um, feeling, feeling of anxiety that you sometimes get on some film sets. It was just very loose and fun and yet he got the job done. He's kind of magical that way. I mean, every film he makes is just ma magical anyway, from Pan's Labyrinth to Hellboy and, of course, Pacific Rim. Um, yeah. So you know what? Let's talk about Van Helsing because okay. it is absolutely amazing. And um, you play Michaela, who's a very, very scary lady, <laughs> I've got to say. 
but what a great character to play. This is the fifth and final season, so I'm sure there's going to be loads, loads of fans uh, messaging John, Jonathan Walker and trying to get it back for a sixth season. But, but I, you know, I'm up to episode three. Um, obviously, I don't want to spoil it for it for anyone. Uh, but you're back. You're back because obviously at the end of season four, you know, we thought Michaela, Michaela, you know, it was over. So how did you know the part come back for you? I mean, as far as you was concerned, you was gone. I absolutely thought I was gone, and it was a sad day. I shed a tear. You know, I said bye to Jonathan Walker and Kia King and and Jesse Stanley, and I walked off set, and I was like, Boo! But yeah, at the at the rap party that season, John Walker came up to me and he was like, Heather, I have a, a dream of shooting in Slovakia for the next season. And Michaela had in the Dark One's origin story. Hmm. And I'm just letting you know, I'm just putting that bee in your bonnet. And um, more to be revealed later. And that was kind of all I got. I, I didn't know what, where he was going or what was going on there. And then I got a phone call closer to the date. I think it was like three months prior. And he said, okay, it's a go. We're heading to Slovakia. Michaela is totally in this. And I need to know if you are game because if you're not like, what are we gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> what, are we, what are we gonna do with this story if you cannot come to Slovakia? And I just said, hell yeah, I'm in. Uh, get me on that plane. So uh, it was it was incredible. It was incredible and, to go. So, yeah, you, I thought I was. And when you read the script, because you know the start of this se se season, it's the Heather show. It really, really is, which is awesome. And we see Michaela in. A different light because because obviously Jack has gone back into time uh, to start uh, you know to start stop the dark one and then we we s start to learn that you were the reason why we had a dark one. I mean, what did you think about the writing and what they've got in store for you? Obviously, I don't want to spoil it for anyone, um, but what did you think of the writing and this story to come? So I was given the script for those for those three um, episodes, the Transylvanian ones. So I um, I took a look at those and yeah, I was very much like, oh wow, Michaela, there isn't much light in her. She is like <laughs> full on toward the dark side of the room there. So she's just in the shadows at all times. And then there was pages of Latin that I had to memorize and look up what mm. they meant. And then I'm conjuring in these scenes in the middle of these castles with all this history and and just it felt like there was a lot of power going on there and and um, yeah it was just a very powerful incredible experience reading the script I I thought that it was great how they have I mean we've watched the first three so I'm not spoiling anything by talking about the first three right. No, you don't right. spoil anything. So I just love how they have the beautiful Trisha Helfer's character, Olivia, transform into the Dark One. Mm. She gives such a stellar performance and and how Michaela is instrumental in that and mm. how I wield my manipulation to and, and my magic to ultimately mm. create this creature this dracula that takes over and then my you know michaela thinks oh i'm gonna rule by your side <laughs> which is absolutely yeah. misguided yeah. <laughs> yeah dracula's like no i don't think so i don't need your help goodbye <laughs> you can stand and, over and, there and, and of course you lose your head again and um you know it's <laughs> a sign you know you keep you keep losing it you really do but <laughs> um when that happened, yeah. I was like, "No, not again, not again." Um, so, so obviously, you came into season four. Um, am I right in saying that? Yes, yeah, season think, four. I think, got yes. it. Yeah. yeah. How how different was it to to, to film film season four 
uh, compared to you know Slovakia. I mean, you're on you're on location. I mean, how amazing was that? And because it was flashbacks, it was almost mm. like I could flesh out Michaela's backstory mm. in a way that I couldn't before. So I established her in season four and the writers established her in season four as a certain thing and coming out of that tomb. Uh, and then we learn about her backstory and her where she comes from. And so I could link to the present day Michaela, the season four Michaela, and make those bridges and so that it made sense. I don't know, it felt really full and she, it made so much sense how they wrote her to to make it fit with the season for Michaela that we'd already established. Mm. I mean, how much of, of the character of Michaela, because you say that they wrote for her, but how much of you is in Michaela and how much of, of it is the character that you're being told you're supposed to play? Because Michaela was so, uh, like I said, because she was so dark, it yeah. was a little tough for me, actually. You know, I'm a, I'm a mom and I, I try to live in the light and with hope and kindness. And so um, to channel that dark energy was a bit of a challenge for me, actually. So I don't know how much of me is actually in there. Maybe like when I'm really irritated or really angry, just amplified by a million. So I just kind of grabbed yeah. onto that and went with that. I think also when you play those characters that are maybe a little bit against your own self, you just got to go with what they desire most of all and really grab onto what they desire above mm. all and go for that. Like Michaela just mm. wanted power. She just wanted power. <laughs> so just like she kind did. of grab onto she that and whatever she does is her thing. And and what have we got to expect from Michaela going forwards? Um you know, is there is there more intense things to come or or you're not allowed to say? I know I can't say at this point. I'm all I've got to be all zippy mouth and can't do the the stuff that hasn't been aired <laughs> yet. I can't okay. do the stuff, that Brian. Is, that That's is the quote fine. That is fine. I yeah, can't do non, the stuff. Non non disclosure agreements uh, <laughs> so um what was next next i was going to ask um you know the cast that you're around are just amazing they really re really really are i mean who do you click with the most on set who who who's your bestie you know yeah jesse stanley and i are are pretty close you know, I stay, I've stayed in touch with her from day one. When I came onto set, she came up to me and she was just like, do you want to go for coffee and, you know, discuss our scenes together? And I, I was just like, this doesn't typically happen in TV and film. You just mm. go onto set and do your scene with the people, but she wanted to sit and have coffee and chat about our scene and get to know me. And it was just such a lovely gesture. And we've stayed close ever since Jesse oh. Stanley. <laughs> BFF. He plays Buffery um, and Oracle. Yeah. 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 Amazing character as well. Really, really, really is. And it's quite nice to see where she started as well because it is like an origin, you know, season, yeah. re re really, which I think is really good. Um, so coming back to Kim Kim Coates, because obviously he's very well known for Sons of Anarchy, Bad Blood, uh, and and many other things. What was he like to work with? Because he is a bit of a character. Um, I mean, I was texting him the other day and and he says he's so busy, he can't breathe. And then he straight away texts me back say, say, saying it's not COVID. It's not COVID. I'm just really, really busy. Um, so he's such a character. He really is. What's he like to work with? I love Kim. I just totally adored him and he adored me. And I think the thing with Kim is that he really likes to be surprised in scenes and and. I did that, one of our first scenes together, John Scarf, director, also actor in Van Helsing. John came up and gave me a great note, in, whispered it in my ear, and then we did the scene and I I think I scared Kim afterwards. He's like, you scared me, Heather. Like, and so <laughs> I think um, after that I had his 
you know, I had him in my pocket. I had Kim in my pocket. No, but I, I, I adore him. He was awesome to work with. And he definitely would break down a scene and then um, really want to kind of discuss it with you and make sure that we got the most out of every scene every time we were doing it. And it was fun playing with him in scenes too, because he liked that surprise. So you could just like add these elements, these crazy elements. And if I scared him by the end, then I knew I did my job. And it's awesome to see him in that sort of character as well. And uh, the chemistry that you had on screen is awesome. Really, really good. Uh, I've, got a, a quest, I've got a question from uh, Twitter. Uh, this is from Katie Lester. Um, she wants to know, did you follow the Bram Stoker genre before being in Van Helsing? And what is it like being part of history, seeing the very first female Dracula? Mm -hmm. I just love that they made that decision. I also am a pretty big horror buff. And so I definitely followed the Bram Stoker's Dracula and also the Van Helsing feature as well. And I mean, any zombie or vampire flick that there was, I've probably seen, maybe not all of them, but a lot of them. So I feel like when I went into the audition for this, I had that kind of vibe I knew how to channel the vibe because I've been mm. in that world. I've immersed myself in it as entertainment for so many years. Mm. So yeah, it, it, it does feel like an iconic series to be a part of because it just continues this mythology that we all know and love if you're a horror person. Mm. So it feels totally epic to be a part of it and very surreal. I feel lucky. And very empowering for females because, you know, you've got Vanessa Van Helsing, you've got Dracula, and I that's what I like about about, about it per personally. Um, have you kept anything from any of your films or shows that you've been in? Like yes. Any mementos? Yes. I kept a glove from Pacific Rim uh, from my from my um, Kaidanovsky character, a glove. And it's gorgeous. And I think it might have even been a stunt glove. And uh, because I know that Guillermo kept my entire costume and put it on display in a, in a museum in Toronto when we were done filming, because he really loved that particular wardrobe that the mm. Russians wore. But I, I did keep a glove. I have a glove. <laughs> so sweet. I, I love it it's gorgeous you're keeping so it I safe you're keep fun. you're keeping it safe and is that all you've ever kept or are you tempted to take a bit here and there because um because a lot of the stuff is tv it's called hot stock so if your character is going to come back they need to keep it locked away so that they might need to call upon that particular wardrobe one day um yeah, I think besides like feature films or little like movies of the week, if you do those, you can take your wardrobe home. But in terms of TV, they have to keep it. So I haven't right. really got Boo. the chance to keep Boo. <laughs> Boo. 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 They should like give you love. whatever you want. Um, so looking on your IMDB, so I do a bit of research on every guest that, that, that I interview. And I noticed under trivia... You've only got one thing, which is you're of Dutch descent. Oh uh, my only God. one thing. So we need to add to that, I think. We need to add a few more things about you. So I'm going to ask you some uh, short little questions and let's see what the answers are <laughs> going to be. Uh, sure. Heather, what's your most embarrassing moment? When I was nine, I was at a birthday party for and I stepped <laughs> on a caterpillar and it smushed oh. between my toes and everybody laughed at me. I, I don't know why that one is the one that comes up, but there you go. It, <laughs> I was laughed out of the party because I squished a Excellent. caterpillar. With and uh, what's your party trick, if you've got one? My party trick, I can touch my nose with my tongue. What? What? I can't even do that. That is a, that, 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 that is freaky, but good, but amazing. Weird. Um, oh, I can also bend this 
kind of over my head in a weird way. So it flops. See, ready, I ready, ready for them elbow. zombie movies. No. I, yeah, you, you I can, can kind of look my elbow. I can't even. No. No. That is amazing. This... That was the screen grab. Click. Yeah, yeah, that is amazing. I'm going to use that. Um, so what's the one thing that people don't know about you? Ooh, one thing that they don't know about me. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, my goodness. That, uh, no, they would know that. <laughs> I have never been to London. Really? <laughs> You've never been to London. I've never been to London. I've been I've been to Paris, but never to London. Isn't that crazy? Wow! The, wow! The theater. It's been a dream to go to see the theater. But... You need to go to the West where, where, West End. It's awesome. Um, okay, what gets you really angry? What really gets you really angry? When people are unkind. Completely agree. Completely agree. And what makes you happy? My children. Yay. They do. They're li literally a gift from above. I really yeah. think they are. And um, before we wrap this awesome interview, uh, I wanted to get your thoughts on the industry and being a female in the industry. Because... Um, you know, the, 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 there, have, there have been reports in the news. Currently, there's 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 one in the UK with an actor called Noel Clark that that you know twenty now twenty odd women have come forward about bullying behaviour and 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 sexual harassment. Um, I mean, from your point of view, you know, is it happening in the industry where you can see it happening? Um, and what's your view on it? I mean, ov obviously, knees need, get stamped out. I think it's horrid, you know, you know, behaviour. Mm -hmm. But but from a woman's point of view, I mean, working in the in the industry, what's your view on it? I encountered this so much through my career, and especially when you're starting out, is you're more impressionable and you want the job, and you're worried that if you say no that um, it could hurt your career. And it, it's a legitimate worry. And as soon as you find, I think I, I, would, I would suggest to any female actresses who are just starting out to make sure that they have a good advocate on their side, either an, uh, an older female actress as a mentor or an agent who is really on their side, who if you say no and need to say no to either an audition or a part or something that's happening on set, you can get a hold of somebody and use your voice. I absolutely support any female going through any bullying or harassment or assault to use their voice and um, speak out because that's yeah. when behavior becomes accountable and that's when we start to hopefully see some action to shut this crap down because mm. it needs to shut down. And do you feel that, that things are change, change, changing at, at, at the mo moment? I feel like in the industry in Vancouver, Canada, where I am, it does feel like that. It feels like there's a level of respect. I've been lucky enough to be on two shows, Van Helsing and Charmed right now, that are very female heavy and the writers are writing incredibly strong female characters and interesting characters and and the majority of the characters are female and poc and and you look around and there's great storytelling happening and a lot of empowerment that's happening on those sets and so dialogue communication it all happens in a very respectful way so i am seeing change myself which is a that's good awesome. sign yeah that, that is awesome and my, my myself having uh, girls you know i want them to grow up seeing powerful female figures you know i want them to stand up on their own two feet and not get bullied or harassed or anything like like like, like that 
uh, they're only seven and three, so I've got plenty of time to yeah. to mould them yeah. into what great things are going to be in the future. Um, but any conventions planned? Because have you done any conventions before we we wrap this interview? I've done only one convention in my life, and it was for Pacific Rim, and it was in Washington D.C. And it was really fun to meet fans face to face rather than you know over social media. But I've only done one and I don't know why. It's not that I have, I don't know if I've been approached or if I haven't had time. Um, I just have only done one, but I'm open and I'm game to do more. So. <laughs> Well, the thing is, conventions are great. I suppose um, you know some some actors don't don't like them because of the i i idea around it. But I I I think it's fantastic being able to meet the people in person. You know, yeah. unfortunately, you can't shake hands at the mo mo moment, but you can give them a a virtual high five um, and get some some something signed. I think that's one wonderful. So uh, maybe when things start changing, we might see you over in London doing a convention <gasps> and you can till, kill kill two birds with one stone there you Ryan, go you can cite i'm gonna get a hold of you right away i'll be like <laughs> oh, i'm finally making it to london the one thing people don't know about me and now oh, here it London's is I, I can't believe you haven't been to L london i really don't and there's some such such great shows on and yeah. um but you know there is plenty plenty of time and there's plenty of conventions coming up and i'm sure van elsing i know alex uh ponovic's be, been over quite quite a few few times and kim kim coates so you can always come with them as well you can make it yeah. a big a big party you know a big gathering um but well, heather thank you so much for your time uh i've had a great chat with with with, with, with you and i'm a big fan and i'm looking forward to everything else that's happening in van elsing uh, we're yet to find out if Alex Pon Ponovic is going to make a com comeback as Julius uh, because it wasn't confirmed that he was gone. And obviously, uh, Jonathan Scar Scarface character as well. Um, you know, who knows? Who knows? But it's a great se season. So uh, thank you so, so much for your character and your work. I think it's fantastic. Thank you, Brian, so much for chatting with me. You're so pleasant and easy to chat with. So thank you for having me. <laughs> Good. Thank you very much.